But let me show you something you might not have thought about, which will help us learn to multiply even bigger numbers together. Let's take a look at the example 10, right? And we're going to multiply 10 times 9. Now, you know the answer because it's in our multiplication tables. 10 times 9, you know the answer is 90, right? We know that this is the answer. But let me show you a different way to get the answer, but it's going to be able to help us multiply even bigger numbers together. When we're multiplying by 10 or some other multiple of 10, like if we're multiplying by 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60, then what you can do is this zero, you can pretend it's not there. Just pretend it's gone. What is 1 times 9? Well, 1 times 9 is 9, right? That's easy. So you put a 9 down. And since you covered up a zero after you're done doing the 1 times the 9, then you just take that zero and add it back into the answer, and the answer is 90. So we already know from our multiplication tables that 10 times 9 is 90. You remember that. But by knowing that I can just pretend that this isn't here, and then just say 1 times 9, you get 9, and then stick the zero back in, it really lets us multiply even bigger numbers together. So let's take another example. Let's take a, kind of an easy example. What about 20 times 1? Remember, anything times 20, uh, or anything times 1, is the number itself. So you know the answer is 20, because anything times 1 is, it, is itself. But here's another way of thinking about it. You're multiplying by a multiple of 10. When I say a multiple of 10, it means that you're multiplying by 10, or by 20, or 30, or 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. You're multiplying by one of those numbers. That's a multiple of 10. What you can do is just cover up the zero at the end and say, what is 2 times 1? Well, that's 2. And then after I get the 2 there, I'll just stick that zero right back at the end and get an answer of 20. So anytime you multiply by any multiple of 10, just cover up the zero at the end, multiply to get the first digit, and then stick the zero back in the end. It always works that way. So this can help you multiply really, really big numbers together. So let's kind of go on through it and, and get some more practice. You might say, before this lesson, if I asked you, tell me what 70 times 7 is. You might not have any idea how to do that because we don't have a 70s times table, right? But what you recognize is, well, wait a minute, this is a multiple of 10. I'll just take the zero away and say, well, what is 7 times 7? Well, 7 times 7 is uh, 49, right? 7 times 7 is 49. I had to cover that zero, but now that I got the 49 down there, I'll just add that zero right back into the answer. And 70 times 7 is 490. I'm telling you, this is something you'll probably use for the rest of your life. Because a lot of times you have to multiply by large numbers, and a lot of times you can uh, round it up and down so you're multiplying by a multiple of 10. And you can very quickly get the answer when you're multiplying by, uh, even in your head. You know 7 times 7 is 49, then add the 0 back in. That's all you're doing. So let's crank through this and say, what about 50 times 8? 50 times 8. So you know you're multiplying by a multiple of 10. I don't have a multiplication table for this, but what I'll do is cover the zero up. What is 5 times 8 or 8 times 5? I know that that's 40. 8 times 5 is 40 or 5 times 8 is 40. Then I'll take that zero and I'll stick it right at the end and the answer is 400. So 50 times 8 is 400. What about 40 times 2? I'm multiplying by a multiple of 10. I'll just cover up the zero. What's 4 times 2? Well, I know that 4 times 2 is 8, and I'll take that 0 and stick it right on the back of the answer, and then 40 times 2 is 80. Right? Uh, what about 10 times 5? Well, you already know the answer from your multiplication tables, but let's cover up the 0. What's 1 times 5? That's 5. Take the 0 and stick it on the end, and the answer is 50. 10 times 5 is 50, and we know that from our multiplication tables. All right, cruising right along. What about... 60 times 2. So I'm multiplying by a multiple of 10. Let me just cover that 0 up. What is 6 times 2? Well, 6 times 2 from my multiplication tables, it's 12. So that has to be the digits of the answer. But I'll stick that 0 on to the end and make it 120. So 60 times 2 is actually 120. Just a few more. What about 50? And I'm going to multiply that by 5. 50 times 5. I don't have a multiplication table for this, but I can cover up the zero at the end, and I can say, what's 5 times 5? That's 25. 
and then this zero, zero just gets added onto the end. So 50 times five is 250. Last two problems, what is 20 times four? Well, I'm multiplying by a power of 10, so I'm gonna cover up the zero. What's two times four? Well, that's just gonna be eight. And I'll take that zero and stick it on the end, and so the answer, 20 times four, is actually 80. And our last problem, what is 80 times two? 80 times two. I'm multiplying by a power of 10, so I will take away that zero and say, what is just eight times two? Well, eight times two is 16. And then that zero, I can just stick it on the end, 160. It's really important that you understand how to do this because if you're walking down the store and you, you might need to multiply some items together, if one of them is a multiple of 10, it seems really hard. But actually, if I just take away the zero, then this is really easy. Two times four is eight. And I know I gotta stick a zero at the end, so it's 80. Six times two is easy, and I stick a zero at the end. Five times five is easy, then I stick a number at the, uh, at the end, zero. Eight times two is easy, then I stick a zero at the end. So if I go up to you or you go up to your friend or something and say, hey, tell me what you know, 80 times two is, most people won't have any idea, like what is that? Because it's not in the multiplication tables. But anytime you multiply by a multiple of 10, meaning there's a zero at the end, just cover up the zero, forget about it. Multiply the other numbers and stick that zero at the end. And that's always going to work for you for every problem you do. So what I'd like you to do is solve these yourself. Go through them again, make sure you understand. Then follow me on to the next lesson. We're going to continue getting practice multiplying by multiples of 10. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.